In this video, I am going to use this example to make a comparison on the mean, median, and mo. And in the meantime, I want to introduce outlier. So first of all, what is an outlier? Outlier is unusual observation. So let's say 100 people took a test. Everybody got an A, but you got a zero. So your score is an outlier because your score looks weird and unusual compared to everybody else. Right? Everybody, we have 99, 100, or 90 something but you got a zero. So there is one very, very low score. So that looks unusual, that looks weird. We call that an outlier. So in this problem, let's say a test class has 20 students. The instructor asks them, hey, how much do you spend on food and drink in a school day? Can you give me a number? So here are the 20 numbers. So most people spend around 20, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 bucks. But somehow, one student spent $290. So now we are thinking that, all right, so the $290 can be an outlier, right? So the $290 can be an outlier because that looks unusual. But is this true? Let's find out. So what we are going to do now is I am going to calculate the mean and the median, including those $290. And then I will remove it to see what will happen. So for A, so how do you find the mean? So the mean, we add up every numbers, right? So 20 plus 20 plus 20, and then you keep going, right? Until you reach to uh, 28, and then you add the 290, of course, you divide it by 20 students. So this one is equals to 730 divided by 20. So on average, they spend $36.5 on food and drink. Does this sound true to you? The answer is no, that doesn't look right. So this number doesn't look right to me. Why? Because most people spend around 20 to 28. There is no way to say that on average, they spend 36. As no one is spending more than 30. Why do you still say they are spending oh, like around 36.5? That doesn't look right. So this doesn't look right because there is an unusual observation. The 290, the 290 is so big compared to everybody else so that makes the sum really really big the sum is 730 it is supposed to be that big it is big because of the 290 right so how about the median so since uh, we have 20 numbers the mean and median is the average of the 20th not the 20th the 10th and the 11th number so if you count carefully uh, the 10th and the 11th number is right here so the average of 23 and 23. So the median is equals to 23 plus 23 divided by two, that is still equals to 23. Which, which number is closer to the truth? I am looking for how much do they spend on average? Do you use the 36.5 or you use the 23? Everybody will say 23 is closer to the truth because that is how much people spend on average. So one thing that we observe is when an outlier exists, the median is better than the mean. The median provides a better estimation than the mean. Okay, now let's remove the outlier. I'm gonna switch color first. We remove the 290. So for part B, the mean is now 20 plus 20 plus and 20 and then you keep going right and then you will wish to 27 20 26 27 28 but no 290 so since you take one number out then you can only divide it by 19 and then that equals to 422 divided by 19 so do you see that this one is a smaller sum divided by 19, then you get a smaller average. So that is 23.26. That is much closer to the truth because if you take uh, thinking about from 20 to 28, it is true to say that most people spend around 26 bucks, right? In fact, this 23 on this, they are pretty close. And then what about the medians? The median, since you have 19 data, the median is the 10th value so it's the 10th entry which is just a 23 so now 
here is the conclusion when outlier exists. So let's choose a different color to draw conclusion. So mean is the best. So number one, mean is the best. Central tendency, mean is the best when outlier doesn't exist. We always pick the mean. When out, when we always pick the mean. When you consider central tendency, we always pick the mean. When outlier doesn't exist. So when outlier exists, so number two, median is the best. When outlier exists, one or more. So just like in this problem, where there is an outlier, 290, the mean is no longer accurate when you take the 290 into account. So when there is an outlier, don't worry about that. The mean is not going to be too accurate. We use the median. Uh, what about the mode? The mode. The mode is the best for what? For qualitative data. Is the best for qualitative data. All right, so that's the conclusion, and that is the comparison of mean, mode, and median. Because for qualitative data, you can't find the mean and median, so you only have one option left: is the mode. When outlier exists, take the median. When um, there is no outlier, use the mean. So for the median, do you have you heard about this before? So you live in a city, right? So when people talk about the housing, they use the median. They use the median housing price, right? The, because in that city or in that town, some house can be really, really cheap and some house can be really, really expensive. So if you consider the median, you don't. So when you consider the median, the cheap house and the very expensive house, they don't affect the mean anymore. So other than that, when they talk about people's income, they don't talk about the average income in the city, right? They talk about median income. Because we have some some people they earn a lot, some people they don't earn much. See, if you use the word median, you can opt out the lowest and the highest. All right. So that will be all in this lesson. If you think my explanation is helpful, like, subscribe, share this out for me. I appreciate your help. I see you all in the next lesson.